All right. Uh, what is our theme this weekend? The greatest of these is love. So how many of you all did your homework? How many of you guys read Hosea chapter 1, 2, and 3? All right. And 1 Corinthians 13? All right. How many of you uh, were blessed for the united prayer this morning? All right. Amen. And so we are continuing our, our quest to understand this topic. So before we uh, dive in, we're going to say a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we've sang your praises. And Lord, you said you inhabit the praises of your people. And so, Lord, we know you're here. We know your spirit is brooding over us, Father. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person here. Lord, I pray for your spirit to speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we asked a question last night. Why are you here? What were some of the answers we got? Food? Truth? Truth? Fun? Fellowship. Fun? <laughs> Fellowship? So we asked the question, what are you expecting today? So what are you expecting today? Nourishment. Nourishment? Okay. What else? Okay. Well, the Bible does say the meat of the word. Amen. Okay. So uh, the question we ask also is what are you in search of? And we talked last night that I hope that you're here in search of a real relationship with God. We also talked about how God is in search for something. What is God in search for? God is in search of a man. It says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. So God is in search mode. God is intentional on finding what he is searching for. God is searching for two types of people. The first type of person is found in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 16. It says, he whose heart is what? Perfect. And so all of us fi fall in one of two categories. The first category is those who are what? Totally committed to God. So I have a question. Is that the mass majority of people on planet Earth or is that the minority? minority. The minority. And so here we have a, 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 a dilemma that God is in search, but we have to ask the question, why is God in search of those who are totally committed? What do you think? Why does God need us to be 100% totally committed to him? You can answer, it's okay. Say it again. So he can use us, okay, anybody else? Not everybody at once. To spread his love, okay, anybody else? To bless others, anyone else? He wants us to be saved, okay. Well, you know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter uh, 19, Revelation chapter 19, we're going to look at verse 5, Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to look at verse 5. When you have it, please say amen. amen. It says, and the voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. It says, and I heard, what? As it were, the voice of great multitude and the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent, what? Reigns. And so Jesus wants to reign on earth. Jesus wants to come back. Did you know that? He longs to be connected with his children again. And the Bible says that he is going to come back. Notice what it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the what? The marriage of the lamb is come and his. So ladies that are not married, have you thought about your wedding day? 
Have you thought about the preparation that's going to go into preparing for your beloved? Men, have you thought about your wedding day? <laughs> right? And so, so Jesus is waiting for the marriage supper, but he's waiting for his wife to what? Get ready. Right? And so notice what it says in verse 8. It says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in what? Fine linen, clean and white. And the linen is the what? So Jesus can't come for his bride. Jesus can't come for his people until they are arrayed in the proper garments. And it says, and he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. So Jesus is waiting for his bride to get ready to enter into holy matrimony. Now, the relationship between God and his people and his creation, uh, and creation has been uh, compared to a marriage. All throughout the Bible, the symbol of marriage occurs and reoccurs. And so we're going to look at God's proposal. Now, I remember when I was going to propose to that beautiful young lady back there, my heart was so anxious. I, we were in Japan and we were, we were missionaries and I came home on furlough and I got her a, a Bible and my mom said, why don't you put Nikisha Lee? <laughs> I, I know why you're laughing, right? So I'm going to propose to her and I'm going to give her this Bible that says Nikisha Lee. Mm. Woo! And I said, no, we're going to put Nikisha Smothers. And my mom said, why not? I said, because there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a chance that she might say, no. oh, mercy. <laughs> and so, so God, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, he created this earth. He created everything. He got, gave man gifts at his creation. Now, what are some of the gifts that God gave? That's what we're going to look at. So God initiated the divine covenant with mankind, right? And so this marriage was a gift that God gave to man. You see, the Bible says that God said it's not good, you can finish it, that man should be alone. Can I get an amen, ladies? Amen. Can I get an amen, men? So, so marriage, as God ordained it, is a blessing. So what's the converse of that? Marriage, outside of how God ordained it, would be a, a curse. So notice Genesis chapter 1. Let's go Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he... Him, and what does it say? Male and female. Oh, wait. What, what is God's ordained order for, for marriage? Male and female. Okay, I'm just letting you know that's what the Bible says, okay? It says, and created he what? Them, verse 28, it says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be what? fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and God ha ha and have dominion over the fish, over the fowl, over the living things that moved on the earth. So marriage was the first gift that God gave to man. Are you seeing this? So the next question is, what is the second gift that God gave to man? So the first gift was marriage. There is a, 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 a twin that goes with marriage. Can anybody tell me what that is? Sabbath. You are 100%. <laughs> it's the seventh day Sabbath. Now notice, this is before sin. This is before any Jew ever existed. 
This is before Mount Sinai. So God gave the Sabbath as a gift. Can you imagine the first day that they, the first full day that Adam and Eve spent with Jesus, their creator, was a Sabbath day. What's today? So the observance of the seventh day Sabbath is a part of that original covenant relationship with God. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. It says, and on the seventh day, God what? Ended his work, which he had made. And he, what did he do? Now, was he tired? Like, man, all that creation, man, just took it out of me. No, it says he rested. It means that he ceased. It, he had brought it to completion like an artist. He signed his name. And so it says, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all. So whose work was it? Which he created and made. So notice, why the Sabbath? Why did God give man the seventh day Sabbath? You can answer. To rest? To worship him, to spend time with him, to, to pray, amen. So notice what Mark 2, 27, where are we going? Mark 2, 27. Now this is, this is critical because the Bible is very clear. It says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for the Jew. Is that what it says? The, the Sabbath was made for who? Man and not man for the Sabbath. Can somebody help me understand that? The Sabbath was given as a gift to mankind. That means women too, right? Man means Adam means mankind, right? All. And so here it says the Sabbath was the second gift that God gave to man. So now we have to ask ourselves, what's the connection is there between the Sabbath and marriage? You can turn to your partner next to you. I want you to ask them, what do you think the connection is between marriage and the Sabbath? I'm going to give you one minute. Go. You got to talk about it. Don't talk to me. Talk to them. Come on. Find somebody. Gabe, turn around. There we go. You got to talk to somebody. What is the connection? All right, 30 seconds. That's a fast minute, I know. Huh? Oh, okay. All right, so your minute is up. Uh, let's, let's, let's get some answers. Uh, Gabby, would you, what did you guys talk about? All right, growing your relationship. My sister in the back. They're both sacred, right? Yeah. It's holy matrimony. It's holy Sabbath. Okay, anybody else? Nothing should come between you and that covenant. Sex. Nothing should come between you and that covenant? Commitment? Commitment? Quality time? All right. Well, well, let's look in the book of Ruth because Ruth chapter 1 helps us to understand what the Sabbath and marriage have to do with each other. Ruth chapter 1, starting with verse 9, it says, now, now notice, it says on, that God blanked on the seventh day. What did he do? It says he rested. So notice, so if you don't know the background to Ruth, Ruth was a Moabite. She was not a Jewish woman. She was not an Israelite. She was not a Hebrew. Matter of fact, she was a pagan, right? She was a Moabite, and she committed herself to who? Naomi, right? Her husband died, who was Naomi's son, and Naomi told her, you can go back to your country, go back to your family, go back to, and she said, no, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your people will be my people. So she said she was very blank, committed. committed. She was committed to who? 
Naomi, and she was committed to the God of Naomi, who was Yahweh, Adonai. So notice what it says. The Lord grant you that ye may find, what's that word? Rest. Rest. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it might be well with thee. So notice, this rest that we get in marriage, I don't know. B before marriage, I was a little bit restless. Men, <laughs> right? Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, wow, look at her. And you're seeing all, but guess what? Once I committed to my wife, guess what? My eyes went blind. <laughs> and now I have only eyes for one woman. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. And so, and, and it has been well with me. Amen. So notice, God says the connection between the Sabbath and marriage is rest. You see, let's substitute the word rest for fulfillment. Let's go back to the same text. He says, she says, the Lord grant you that you may find, what's that word? Fulfillment, right? Let's go back to chapter three. He says, Naomi says that you may seek fulfillment. So God, in giving the Sabbath, in giving marriage, he says, I've come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. So if you want an abundant experience on planet Earth, God has ordained two things for you. Number one, he's given you the Sabbath. Number two, he's given you marriage. So God wants you to experience true fulfillment. It says, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it might be well? So does God want it to be well with us? Notice what Augustine of Hippo said. This is one of the church fathers. He says, thou hast made us for yourself, thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. So notice, Adam found rest in his relationship with God first, and then he found rest in his relationship with God and, the, and marriage, and then he found rest on the seventh day. It says, thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord. Our heart is what? Restless. So let's go to Matthew now. Jesus makes the invitation. He says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, he says, I will give you fulfillment. How many of you guys want to be uh, more fulfilled in your life? No, and, and that word fulfillment also means satisfaction, right? So now we're going to look at this portrait of marriage. We're still talking about the greatest of these is love. And so when God created, he separated what? Light from darkness. He separated the day from the night. And day and night, what do you do in the day, gentlemen? Ladies, you work. What are you supposed to do at night? Sleep, right? So, so day and night... Now, these two things become one because they are a, 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 they're a unit. So God is trying to show us through creation that in the same way that day and night are separate, but they're a unit, it says in the same way man was to become what? One flesh with his wife. But you, you know what happened to this beautiful proposal? What happened? Man broke the covenant relationship. You see, in Genesis chapter 3, it tells us of man's fall. It tells us how uh, man was, was tempted by the enemy who used a serpent and how woman Eve was deceived and how she, what, bit and then she gave to her husband. Genesis chapter 3, where are we going? Genesis chapter 3, you can turn there. Genesis chapter 3, starting with verse 8. We're, we're talking about how God made a proposal. He, he gave gifts to his wife and, and everything that she had. She needed nothing else, but somehow 
that covenant relationship was broken. And it says in verse 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, what did they do? From the... Did you know man is still running from the presence of God? Do you know men and women in 2023 are still running from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden? And it says, and the Lord God shouted at them, what in the world did you do? It says, no, the, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Where are you, Adam? Now, did God not know where Adam was? Of course he knew where Adam So what was the problem? Adam didn't know where he was in relationship to God. And that's many of us today. We don't know where we truly stand in our relationship with God. You see, the Lord God called unto Adam, Adam, do you know where you are in relationship to me? So I pose that to us today. Do you know where you are in your personal relationship with Jesus? Do you know, is it well with your soul? You see, God is in search of two types of people. The first type is those who are what? Totally committed. And the second type, God is in search of? Oh, can I get a hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. Any sinners in the house? All right. So God is in search of sinners. See, when man sinned, God didn't abandon him. Jesus came, and in Genesis 3.15, he says, I will put enmity. And he said, Adam, what happened? Now, ladies, Adam, just a few verses before, says, Eve, I am going to die for you. Eve, I'll swim the oceans. I'll climb the highest mountain. I will... And then the presence of the Lord came. It says, and, and the Lord God said, behold, the man has become as one of us, knowing what? And it says, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live. Now, does anybody see grace in that statement? Show me grace, please. Some people say there's no grace in the Old Testament. I'm like, it's, it's right in front of you. Please. So, like, uh, so we won't be perpetually in our sin. Ah. God said, no, 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 we've got to take that away because he'll definitely be not happy. So those, he said, because God is love, and he said, if they eat of the tree of life, the tree of life is going to perpetuate them in their sinful, fallen condition and so it was actually mercy. He says, no, 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 no. You, you can't eat this in your current condition. You can say amen. <laughs> that God is merciful. So he says, so he drove out the man. And so now we have the proposal. Now we have the broken covenant. And now there's the first broken family in human history. Anybody come from a broken family? <laughs> If you're a human, you have to say yes, <laughs> right? And so, so now that word dro drove out means that God divorced, God cast out, God put away, and it says, and a flaming sword was turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You see, this was the first broken home. Do we struggle with broken homes today? That's only in North America, right? That's only, oh, no, you mean for where you come from, they have broken homes? Oh, absolutely. You see, we live on a broken planet. <laughs> and so notice Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Notice Jeremiah chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 14. You see, the Bible says that when man turned from God, when man broke the covenant relationship, how did God treat men? And so from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you have this, 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 this succession of falls, this succession of, of pain and brokenness. And, and, and so notice what God says. He says, 
Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am. Woo! Y'all get it later. He says, even though you are backsliding, even though you are in sin, even though you are, are, are an abomination, he says, guess what? I am still committed to you. Wow. He says, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the, is the, the city of God. And so he says, even though you're, you're sinful, even though you're, you're rebellious, even though you want nothing to do with me, I am a man of my word. Notice what Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 says. Notice what it says. It says, for thy maker is thine, what's that word? Husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. <laughs> He's saying, you don't know me. You might not even be seeking me, but guess what? I am your husband, and guess what? I am the Lord. He says, and guess what? And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall, be, shall he be called. So guess what? The creator, the sustainer, he says, I'm married to you. But we don't believe that. We can read the words, but our experience, like, what about all the pain? What about my sin, you know? Uh, I'm in rebellion. What about my sin? What about my addictions? What about the mask that I wear, you know, when, when I go out to this group, I'm, hey, care group, hey, happy Sabbath. And then I go over to this group, I'm like, hey, let's get it in. So, so God, how does he deal with my hypocrisy? How does he deal with my stubbornness? And can he break through to who I really am? If he really knew who I really was, would he still love me when I'm angry? Somebody saying, oh, you can, okay, so. <laughs> I'm no angel. So the question is, how does God treat the sinner. You see, what is God searching for? What is God searching for? The committed, the, the committed totally, and the sinner. So you fall into one of those categories today. Either you're totally committed, right? Or you're not there yet. Or you might be on the other spectrum. You are totally in rebellion. And the only reason why you came here is because somebody was like, you coming. <laughs> God is in search of a man. God is in search of someone who's totally committed. God is in search of sinners. What does that say? That's a song. I think it's Depeche Mode or somebody like that. <laughs> and it's interesting. Man sings his pain. Man glamorizes his misery. Man posts for the world to see their filthiness. But guess what? In spite of that, God says, there's something you're missing. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter how much money or how much whatever it is you, you, you've set your heart on, that can never, ever fill the void. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a breakout session. So if you look in your program, session two, page five. So let's see. I want you to get in groups of five. No, no, no. Pay, that was last night. We skipped that one. So page five. And these are the questions. Why do you think God gave the institution of marriage to mankind? 
Is the world restless because, today because of the misunderstanding and misinterpretation of God's two original gifts in marriage and the Sabbath? How can the reinstitution of these two gifts make a difference in our lives today? Does this truth help you in your personal walk with God? If so, how? So I'm going to give you, what time is it? 1020. 10.20. And we're supposed to be done by what time? 10.30? No, no, no. Yeah, 11 o'clock. So we're going to take 15 minutes. How many minutes? And, and in, your, in your group, I want you to bring your Bibles. I don't want you to just give your opinions, right? I want you to bring Scripture into your discussion, right? 